Good morning everybody. I'm here at Leopard Pen in the Buffalo Camp section of the reserve this morning. We're still continuing with the data collection so I'm heading on a herbivore count through this area this morning and because sadly you can't be with us I'm going to take you with me on the camera. Okay so we've got our data sheet ready. You can see we're going in the Buffalo Camp today. We're heading in a clockwise direction and for each herbivore species we see we're going to record the total number and where possible break it down into age and sex ratios as well. Okay first up for counting this morning we've got a group of sable antelope here. Uh, some of you may have been involved in the movement of these guys out of the breeding camps and into the wild and this is a mixed group here of males and females I've counted 13. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell the difference between the sexes just as they sit down here. Uh, for the sable, both male and female have horns. Um, when they get older, the males do darken in colour, but these are still quite young. Uh, I think you can just see, yeah, just at the back there, you can see a penis sheath on the tummy of the one standing telling us it's a male. animals aren't making the filming too easy this morning but we do have some eland here this is the largest antelope in Africa and I did just see um, a, a very very young calf run away at the back there uh, both sexes have horns oh, there's the calf okay, let's, let's zoom in through just there 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 <laughs> Okay, we're with another group of sable here and this is very exciting because it's a group in the wild but with some calves. So remember that I mentioned the breeding camps just before um, and that's because sable antelope should exist in this area but they were hunted to extinction. And actually hunted throughout their range almost to extinction. Um, so part of the Pidwe ethos is to return all species that belong here back to the area. So we do breed the sable intensively in the breeding camps and then like I say when they're about 18 months old they're released out into the wild. Uh, last year we had our first wild birth and here's our next recorded two births in the wild which is amazing news. So just to help identify the sexes at the back there, that's definitely an adult male. Uh, first of all, you can see the penis sheath on the tummy. Also the size and the very dark, almost black in colour. Those big uh, horns sweep into the back as well. Not on the herbivore list, but we've got a grey heron here. And many of you will recognise this bird. It's not confined to Africa. Really common and widespread and found throughout the world. They like these shallow water bodies and they're active day and night, feeding mostly on fish. Um, the most common fish they'd probably be likely to find here is something called a tilapia. Uh, but they will take other prey items as well, like mollusks and insects. A couple of blue wildebeest here and they're standing perfectly to demonstrate how to differentiate the sexes. On the left is the male, right is the female. So if you look on the tummy of the male, just towards the back there, you see a little triangle, that's the penis sheath, and the female has a completely smooth tummy. She is slightly smaller as well. And these guys are also sometimes named brindled gnu. You can see what looks almost like stripes on them, that's where the brindled name comes from. And then gnu is from a sound that they make. Okay, we're at a water point called Hyde Dam here. We've got another group of sable to count. Great to see them doing so well in the wild. Oh, there's another calf there. Oh, a few calves. Haven't seen these ones yet. Amazing. I think there's actually four little ones there. <laughs> Great to see. 
Okay, and then we've also got some giraffe that are thinking of coming down for a drink. We've got a couple of females on the right there, male on the left. Quite an obvious size difference, but actually from this distance we can tell by looking at the horns. So the females on the right there have got much thinner horns and they've got black hair covering the entire horn. The male on the left here has got thicker horns. If you can just see at the top there, you can actually see the bone protruding the hair doesn't cover the whole horn. That's because males um, fight between each other in something called sparring or necking and they swing their heads and hit each other with the horns, which is what rubs the hair off the top there. So just got a couple of water buck moving through. We're at the end of our route here. That's about a 20 kilometer loop that we've just covered. I hope you enjoyed all the herbivores. Uh, no buffalo today, unfortunately, but we are gonna be joining Cedric in an upcoming episode with the breeding herd.